This episode explains the origin of the blood ancestors. It starts with a story Abraham's grandmother told him when he was a child. There was once a nobleman named Sardu who suffered from gigantism. The bones in his body were bent out of shape and he had to walk with a cane. The cane he held is now the Sardu sword that Abraham carries. Although Sardu looks like an otherness, he was very kind to the villagers. His brother was heartbroken at the sight of his ill brother. Legend had it that there was the blood of a great gray wolf in the forest that could cure Sardu's condition, so his brother formed a hunting team and ventured into the forest. While resting in place, they suddenly came across a strange creature, thinking it was the gray wolf. His brother and the others chased after it, and left Sardu where he was. However, a long time passed and his brother and the others did not return. Sardu followed their footprints and discovered his comrades' bodies near a cave entrance. He then ventured into the cave. Inside the cave, Sardu found that the creature before him was not the gray wolf they sought. This monster was feasting on his brother's blood. Upon seeing Sardu, the monster attacked him. Sardu was thrown by the monster to the side of a coffin, and then the monster pinned him down. The monster expressed its admiration for Sardu's massive body. The monster picked up a handful of soil filled with infected nematodes and fed it to Sardu. Afterward, the monster lost its life and fell to the ground, while Sardu successfully inherited its vampire powers. A week later, Sardu returned to the village and locked himself inside his house, never appearing during the day, only at night. From that point on, children in the village started to go missing one by one. Although it was a story told by his grandmother, it was indeed a real occurrence. Abraham's back at the place where we rounded up the blood ancestor yesterday. He chased after the blood ancestor along the route he took to escape at that time, hoping to find some clues to continue hunting them down. At that moment, Vaughn suddenly appeared in front of him. Before Abraham could react, he was quickly subdued by two vampire warriors. Soon Abraham was brought before the patriarch. During their conversation, Abraham learned that there were a total of seven patriarch. Abraham chased to kill down the seventh oldest blood ancestor, and the originals are the most powerful of all vampires. They also had some connection with each other. Abraham's heavy hit on the blood ancestor yesterday was seen by the rest of the six patriarchs. They hope that can work together to deal with the blood ancestor. Abraham asked if there was a way to completely kill the Strigoi. The patriarch didn't say anything when they heard it. After all, they have the same weakness as the blood ancestor. Abraham remembered a book that documented how to eliminate the vampires. The book is called Falling Light. Patriarchs hearing this, the ancients became extremely angry and asked Abraham how much he knew about the contents of the book. Although Abraham was aware of the existence of the book, he had no knowledge of its contents. The patriarchs then started whispering and Abraham asked Vaughn what they were talking about. Vaughn said they were discussing whether or not to kill him. After their discussion, the patriarchs decided to spare him but asked him to contact them if he found any trace of Abraham agreed to their request. And the patriarch began to slowly awaken. They then gave Vaughn the order to feed. At Vaughn's command, a man was brought forth and bound in front of the three patriarch. Under Abraham's shocked gaze, the patriarchs began to feed around the men. On the other side, F and Nora arrived at the CDC, intending to bring back some items for experimentation. Strangely, there was not a single staff member present. Suddenly, a bloods rushed out. F immediately retaliated upon seeing this. Nora swiftly drew her gun and shot the bloods on the spot. Another bloods prepared to attack, but thankfully F noticed and saved Nora's life. On the other side, Palmer and Eichhorst arrived at an abandoned factory in the suburbs. They're going to buy this place as the Blood Ancestor's lair. Then Marchand, who they were talking to about working with, came on the scene. After a conversation, Palmer eventually purchased the place for $20 million. Palmer wanted to offer her triple the salary to join his company. Without hesitation, Marchand accepted Palmer's high salary offer. F. They're trying to come up with a vaccine to inhibit the bloods. Only by breaking the infection chain would their chances of winning increase. While discussing, Vasily and Dutch came down from upstairs. They hadn't seen Abraham for a day, so Vasily decided to go out and search for him. At that moment, there was a knock on the door. Vasily opened it and found Abraham had returned. He was still immersed in the horrifying scene and hadn't recovered yet. Later, Vasily found Abraham in the room. Abraham mentioned the next mission. He kept a lot of equipment against the bloods in one of the warehouses. 
Just to deal with this kind of situation today, Abraham had a premonition that another major battle would soon begin. On the other side, Zack was playing with throwing knives alone in his room, frightening F when he saw it. It turned out that Zack refused to believe that his mother had turned into a bloods. F felt extremely guilty upon hearing this and could only comfort Zack's emotions. However, Zack now only wanted to see his mother as soon as possible. Meanwhile, the principal of the blind school announced that they were relocating to the outskirts. Soon, they arrived at their destination by school bus, only to be greeted by Eichhorst. The next day, Eichhorst went to the blood's lair and awakened Kelly. The blood ancestor has restored Kelly's sanity, intending for her to become one of his generals. Then, Eichhorst brought Kelly to the factory, where there was a large pit filled with dirt. Eichhorst mentioned that inside, a new type of bloods was being nurtured. The blood ancestors call them feelers. Kelly's job is to nurture them. Kelly, as the blood ancestor's right-hand woman, will specialize in nurturing and screening feelers. If she encounters individuals who do not meet the requirements, Kelly will break their necks on the spot. On the other side, Abraham led a few people to a warehouse. He had stored many weapons there to fight against the bloods. Soon, they found the place where the weapons were stored. Strangely, the rolling shutter door was not locked. Abraham distinctly remembered that he personally locked the warehouse. So, Everyone took out their weapons and prepared for battle. However, upon opening the door, they found an elderly couple hiding inside the warehouse. After questioning, they learned that the couple lived upstairs and had sought refuge here to escape the bloods. After resolving the misunderstanding, everyone started moving the equipment to fight against the bloods. But at that moment, the lights suddenly went off. When F turned the lights back on, they were already surrounded by bloods. F immediately began to fight back upon seeing this. However, the sound of gunfire attracted more bloods, forcing them to fight and retreat at the same time. After F and the others escaped, they encountered even more bloods outside. Unfortunately, they ran out of pistol bullets. F and the others had no choice but to draw their silver swords and face the bloods head on. However, a vampire managed to sneak attack the elderly couple from behind due to their negligence. By the time Nora noticed, it was already too late. After beheading the remaining bloods, Nora took out the ultraviolet lamp. The elderly couple had already been invaded by the nematodes. Upon seeing this, the silly directly drew his gun to kill them. But F stopped him, because these two people could serve as their research subjects. Inside the Manhattan City Hall, the governor and some legislators were discussing the recent virus outbreak. They had also encountered these creatures one after another. Justine was curious about where the military had gone, and the governor was also puzzled. At this moment, the minister spoke, saying that they had dispatched 1,000 doctors and set up quarantine stations on various streets, detaining anyone who might be infected. Justine was puzzled by this. The spread of these creatures was extremely fast and they had to be killed to prevent further spread. Then, the two engaged in a heated argument. Eventually Justine stops bickering, and she's off to Staten Island to build up defenses to stop more people from getting infected. On the other side, F brought the infected elderly couple to the laboratory. By now, their bodies were filled with nematodes, and F explained everything to them. The couple became angry after hearing this, and decided to leave. F did not stop them, as they feared infecting their son after turning into monsters. The couple panicked and decided to stay as subjects for F's experiments. The experiment began, and F took some blood samples from the couple for research. After dropping the blood into a petri dish, within a few seconds, all the bacteria were instantly killed. This was something currently impossible in the medical field, indicating that creating a vaccine would be very challenging. Soon, the woman began to feel unwell. Upon seeing this, F had no choice but to administer a sedative to her. The husband, witnessing his wife's suffering, pleaded with F to end her suffering. However, F did not want to do so. He first comforted the man and then deceived him onto the operating table. Immediately after, he tied the man up. For the sake of all humanity, F was willing to bear the burden of infamy to successfully develop a cure. On the other side, the silly and Dutch arrived at an apartment building. Their plan was to clear the bloods from nearby buildings in order to establish a defensive line. As soon as they entered, a strong smell of blood hit them. Blood splatters were everywhere on the walls. The two followed the blood trail to the restroom, where Vasily found the resting bloods. So, 
The two of them began discussing their plan. They split up and took separate actions. Vasily hid behind the bloods. While Dutch created noise to attract the vampire's attention, the bloods woke up one after another. They slowly approached Dutch. Just as the bloods were about to get close, Dutch took out a hand grenade and threw it. In the next second, silver shards fell on the bloods, causing them to lose their fighting ability due to the burning sensation. Dutch immediately drew her silver sword and killed them. Vasily rushed out from the entrance and began to encircle the bloods. After finishing their task, the two of them arrived by the swimming pool, discussing which neighborhood to clear the vampires from next. Vasily was extremely familiar with every building in the city. While Vasily was speaking, Dutch had already undressed and entered the pool. Then, Dutch invited Vasily to swim together, but Vasily declined Dutch's invitation. After a few more invitations from Dutch, Vasily took off her clothes and got in the pool. Then, the two of them began to play in the water, and the atmosphere became ambiguous. On the other side, Nora found Abraham and told him that the elderly couple was about to transform into bloods, because Abraham said the ancestor could see through the eyes of the blood. Therefore, Nora was worried that their location would be exposed after the couple transformed into bloods. Abraham reassured Nora that there was nothing to worry about, since the couple had been in the trunk when they came back. They didn't know where this place was so their location wouldn't be revealed. Once Nora confirmed the safety of the situation, she quickly returned to the laboratory and encountered an angry F. F had tried dozens of methods but couldn't break the virus. Nora had no choice but to take matters into her own hands. She found a breakthrough, a leucine nutritional defector that destroys amino acids in the human body. If applied to bloods, their amino acids would be destroyed, causing the bacteria inside them to starve to death. They immediately started the experiment and, with great effort, finally succeeded in developing it. Indeed, leucine is really eating up the cells of the strigoi. 